Okay, you've got a glorious morning here, um, so good time to come out and fly. And got another sort of fold-in uh, Mavic uh, copy drone, uh, of, but obviously a ridiculously cheap price in comparison. A little budget one here. Um, I've reviewed several of them, and I put links down in the description for you. This is uh, very similar to some of the others I've reviewed as well. Looks really nice. Uh, it's got a nice-looking lens on the front as well, and we can adjust the lens as well. We can point it at virtually any angle we like. It doesn't come fully down. Probably does about 70 degrees, something like that. It's just a little bit off, sort of uh, full, uh, pointed down on the ground, but uh, it's quite nice. There's no click stops or anything, and it just literally does seem to stay where you put it, so it's got a little, tiny bit of friction in there. Uh, it's, like I say, a really nice looking little drone, nice and compact, and we always call these sort of floppy dog ears, the, these sort of props, they fold out the way, so it's just really good, and they're quite flexible, well, really flexible actually, uh, as you can see there, so not really going to do any damage, uh, I would hope. You've got a gaming style transmitter, and I'll run through all the functions on that in a second. You've got an 800 milliamp hour um, single cell battery, and it's a proprietary one, and you get the little charger that goes in there, and that plugs into any USB port to charge it up, and then it just simply slides in there and connects up. And then you've got an on-off switch on the top, so you can leave it in situ, and it won't cause any problems. You've got release catches here, but that's only when it's uh, when it's folding out, so I'll just show you. So when it's out, it then won't fold back in. Absolutely rock solid. You have to press the catch in and then knock it back into position. You pull out uh, the back ones first of all, so the, and then the front ones, and obviously you just do the reverse of that, the front ones fold back, and then it comes out to be quite a nice sized drone sort of thing, so really nice. Lightweight, uh, there's no uh, landing gear, it's already built on, you've so got sort of, the front ones are there as you can clearly see, and then the back ones are right on the uh, back arms there, or back legs, so uh, nice little quad, looks pretty good. The transmitter has got that sort of rubberized plastic covering, uh, which actually feels really nice in the hand. And the top of the uh, actual sticks are rubberized as well. So, uh, and you could either do it with pinchers or thumbers, but it's really comfortable for thumbing. Actually, it's um, uh, they're really uh, sort of got a really nice ergonomic feel to them. Everything's marked up on here, apart from the flick flip button that's all uh, but everything else is really well marked up and it's in Tigger RC colours obviously with the black and the orange uh, which looks really super smart as well. Got our on off switch here, we've got auto takeoff and auto land and uh, you've got a calibration button here which I'll show you all these in a minute when we get flying. We've got our trim buttons here and these are also the trim for the yaw as well uh, and this is trim for the direction stick. On here we've got our speed, so we press this and it alters the speid and I'll run through all the speeds when we get up and airborne. It's got a headless mode on it and we can activate the camera either with the phone app or with the actual uh, controller itself which is good and the uh, we've got take still photographs with it as well or we can use the phone app and it shows you on the phone app that you've what you've actually done which I really like some of them don't and you might be wondering how we hold the phone in it just simply folds out like this it's a normal sort of design but if you're new to them uh, it, it is quite a nice idea and it would take almost take a, a phablet in there it's absolutely um, yeah huge amount of room there so uh, it's a mode 2 flight mode, so we simply push the, that and that will make it accelerate, so the throttle makes it go up and you pull it down, the throttle makes it go down. It's got altitude hold, so the stick goes back to centre and that means it will hover at an altitude. It won't stay in one position, it can drift around and I've actually got breeze coming onto my back at the moment. And with any quad, even if it's a massive great quad, if it hasn't got a GPS or a lock-in system like uh, optical flow, any amount of breeze will make it drift, so you know don't don't be surprised that when you get up it it, it will drift, and literally any any amount will make it go. To make it rotate, you push this that way, and it rotates to the right, rotates to the left, uh, and that's called yawing with quads. Uh, you've got a direction stick here, so push this, and the quad goes forward, and that's for the camera forward, and uh, and that's called pitching. So it pitches forward, pitches backwards, and then you roll to the right and you roll to the left. So if I do that like that, so it's rolling to the right, rolling to the left, and the sticks aren't uh, point to the compass. You can go at you know obscure angles like that, or hard angles, or or whatever. It really doesn't matter. But in normal mode, the front of the camera, uh, the front of the quad is always the front. So even if it's pointed straight towards you, if you push the stick. Forward, Forward, it will come forward towards you, it's the quads position. Headless mode, which is activated by this one here, 
then ignores the front of the quad and it literally when we bind it up and I'll show you how we do that in a second if we bind it up that way and we're facing that way that is always forward no matter on what orientation the quad is in hence it's headless it has no head in apart from what the instruction is from the uh, transmitter so the quad has no head in itself so and you can actually rotate it and still go in one direction uh, it's not something I like um, but some people when they begin like to use it uh, I think just learn how to fly properly once you once you've mastered it and it takes a little couple of goes once you've got it, it it's a doddle and, and it's all really easy then headless mode you can get into trouble uh, because if it goes behind you it then changes its orientation or or, or then you turn around and oh, all sorts of problems so <laughs> we don't want to go into that we don't want any problems when we're flying it's far too much fun so, so with this one we turn on the uh, transmitter first of all we just simply hold it in for and you get a couple of beeps off it and there is a little red LED that you've got such bright light and you might not be able to see these things and then we turn on the quad second and we've got a flashing LED at the back there a little green one and then the only other ones we've got are blue ones on the front arms and they're flashing away like that and then to bind it we simply go up and down on the throttle we get fast flashing LEDs and then it goes solid there we go and the same happens on the green as well so hopefully you can see that now, I recommend if you're new to flying and everything, don't bother with the FPV or filming anything. I would just simply get up and fly like this, which you can do. Just leave that in and just go and fly. That's definitely the way I would do it. But I'm going to show you how we fly using the app. Now, I did connect this up uh, inside just to make sure everything was working. And, and uh, all, all you need to do is just go into your Wi-Fi settings and then log on to it. Now, it hasn't reconnected to it automatically, so some do, some don't. And you connect onto that what's happened is the quad set up a wi-fi hotspot and we've just logged onto it you don't need any other wi-fi hotspots around you and you uh you you don't use up any data roaming or anything so it's literally a link between the two and you don't get internet access with it obviously so we can close that and then and the actual app is called x dash pack ar so i'm just going to launch into that and it does actually come with a game as well and there's that awful noise so i'm going to turn the music off There we go. Uh, I'm going to leave the sounds on because they do make some <laughs> unusual sounds and we just could play around with that. And you can have it in either in Chinese or the default on this one was actually English, which is good. Uh, so if you want to play the game, you play the game here and I'll, we'll just have a look at that later on. It's nothing really, to be perfectly honest. Uh, or you can just fly. So we're going to fly. There we go. <laughs> we started the engines, apparently. Yeah. Um, I've done a full uh, video on how to fly using an app, but I'll be running through the app as well during the actual review. Okay, so I'm not going to turn the controls on because uh, we're just going to fly using the transmitter and I'm just going to pop it over there. I'm oh, just going to, oh sorry, let's just calibrate it first of all. So to calibrate it you simply hold down this calibration button here, you get a flashing LED and then when it stops flashing it's calibrated the uh, gyros on it. Uh, so basically you must be on somewhere level and don't move it while you're doing it because it's actually calibrating it, telling it that this is level. I'm actually just going to pop it down here and then let's get it to go. So pull the sticks down and out and it will start the motors. Oh, that's quiet. Wow, that is really quiet. <laughs> I'm going to start the video as well. I'll just start it on the app this time. And we get a count off of the video working as well, which is really nice. Well, there we go. That's lovely. Nice. Yeah, and actually, if you do a nice smooth stick input, it flies smoothly as well. That is nice. Yes, we like so that's in low rates, always starts in low rates. That's intermediate. So we get a little bit more anxious, but I don't expect it's going to be. And then, whoa, that's high rates. Way, yeah, no, it does get a move on. That's pretty good. Very nice indeed. That's good. Whoa, the colours are a bit off on the actual. The, video but never mind very good indeed whoa just hit the tree whoa we're way over 80 meters there that's lovely really nice I just fly an FPV now. you can actually fly this FPV that's awesome and pretty unusual as well for this sort of level yeah I'm literally just flying that FPV that is superb. Very nice. So just looking at the screen, I'm not even looking anywhere near it. So let's just pop that up just a wee bit higher. Let's just stop that and just take a still. 
Whoa, whoa, <laughs> that's cool. Let's start the video again. Whoa, that's really nice. Oh yeah, we like this already. Nice quad. Yeah, I like it. You can land using the auto land one. So if you press that and it will just come down. Sorry, I should have done that a bit higher. And then it will kill the motors when it comes down. Or just pull the throttle off. When it's coming on auto land, you can still control what direction everything's going to be going in. Let's try the auto takeoff this time. Oh, you have to prime the motor, sorry, on this one. There we go. So I don't really see a lot of sense in it because you can just pump the throttle and it will go up. Or you just press this and it will go up to about a metre, a metre and a half there or so. And then it will just sit nice and level. Well, like I say, it's got no position hold, so any wind or anything that catches it, it will move. With the altitude hold, it will try and stay at the altitude here. It's killing the motors there as I went up. Right, so we've got a little bit of breeze. So if I go up, you can hear it killing those motors. If I try and push it down, it will try and throttle up. There we go. It's trying to hold that position. That is really good. Yeah, the juddering is because I'm actually activating it a little bit too quick. That's just the wind catching that. If you do it nice and slow, it really does do it. Very good indeed. Nice. That is super smooth. For what it is, really impressed with it. Let's try some flips. And if you give it real rapid stick inputs like this, it really does shift around. If you do it really nice and slow, you can just do a really smooth pan. Unfortunately, the colours are a little bit off on the... Uh, there we go, so it's just turning now, just starting to really smooth. Some quads sort of judder to start, and they're smooth once they're moving, and then they suddenly stop, but this one's not got that effect at all. So let's show you the headless mode, and I think we bound it that way, didn't we, when I bound it up? So I'm just going to press in headless. Yeah, that's right. So that is always forwards to me. So even though the quad looks like it's going, it's going forwards now. That's actually left, right, and forward and backwards. Uh, it, it's up to you whether or not you use this. It's not something I really enjoy. I must admit. But you can see, you can see how it's flying basically there. But we're going to kill the headless mode. Simply press that. When it's got headless mode, you get flashing LEDs, uh, and we've probably got flashing LEDs at the moment. Yeah, I think we have. Yeah, we've got flashing LEDs purely because the uh, the battery is low. So. Well, that is a really smart little quad. Really working well. I like it. And it flies really smooth. Nice flying. Really is lovely. Really cool. God, I guess I better do a shift on as well. <laughs> nice stuff. Very good indeed. I'll just go run this battery out and then we'll have a play with the phone later. Eh? <laughs> nice. And it holds stable as well when you're actually sort of doing tricks and stunts and playing with it. It's really good. And that FPV, like I say, you can actually fly FPV on it, which is quite awesome, really. For a quarter of this level, that's really good. Let's see how we get on. I hope the battery doesn't go when I'm over there. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Really, I'm nowhere near looking at the quad. The quad's actually behind me now. Yeah, and if you want it smooth, I would drop the speed down to low. And then you can do smooth as well. God, I'm getting no drop out on that video whatsoever. Absolutely superb. Oh, I'm loving this. Let's just keep that nice and smooth too and do a pan up through the house. Colours are off on the screen, I must admit, so the video obviously is not that great. Yay, look at that. That is really nice. Can't do that with many quads, actually, not at this price level anyway. And there we go, like I say, you can do smooth as well. Lovely, really cool. Really nice flyer. Oh, this could be taking taking the uh, the best for the uh, uh, you know the award for the 
cheap folding drone. God, yeah, that's just lovely. God, I can't knock that at all, I must admit. Yeah, that's me. Whoa, that's me going too hard on this thick input. I'm going to bring it back in because that battery was low. <laughs> I've forgotten about that. I really don't want it to drop now. There we go. That's a fair old height as well, and it's still holding Wi-Fi as well. Oh, here we go. <laughs> there we go, that's better. The, with altitude hold ones, you don't get a fast descent on the actual quad. Well, this one is coming down quite fast. I think, I think that's more battery than anything else. Yeah, it is. <laughs> hey, that was cool. I enjoyed that. Oh, I hope they recorded it, because uh, it suddenly it's dropped out because the battery's gone so low. That was awesome. Okay, as the song goes, what a difference a day makes. And literally the following morning, because I couldn't fly for the rest of yesterday, we have snow on the hill over opposite. We've had snow here, which is all actually cleared through. It's blowing uh, quite a wind and it's absolutely freezing bitter cold so uh, yeah welcome to the highlands it's great okay so i'm going to fly it on the app today i'm not going to be out here very long so i'm absolutely frozen i kid you not so you pop the quad on first of all and as you can get, see we get the flashing leds again i'm going to go into the app because uh, it's actually quite good the way this app works load it up and then obviously it's waiting to connect to the Wi-Fi and you can go straight to your Wi-Fi settings from here so you don't have to go through back to your main screen and uh, settings and everything just literally go into Wi-Fi and then it takes you through and there we go uh, onto it straight away hopefully it will connect up if not you just press it to connect up and it's the same setup that we had before just come back into it there we go warns you that there's no internet access and then we just connect to the quad now if you notice we've still got um, the flashing LEDs even though we're connected and we can play a game on this which is uh, it's a bit of a weird uh, game I think but uh, well, I'll show it to you anyway so there we go so you get the engine starting up and you've got very dramatic music if you want and basically you just move around and then shoot shoot these things as if you're sort of flying sort of thing but you, you can't actually alter where they're going all you're doing is altering the background sort of thing but it, yeah it's a it's a bit of fun i suppose um so as you see i can't actually move towards the aircraft that are coming towards me they're just going at a certain pattern sort of thing so anyway that's the game all over and done with And then we go into the fly mode, and this wind is really quite strong, so it'd be quite interesting to see. I love the way you get the uh, motors start up and everything. We've still got flashing LEDs, as you can see, so we're not actually ready to fly. We need to turn on the controls, and I've done a video of how to fly using an app, and it's basically all the same on here. But I'm going to run through it all with you anyway. And now, if you notice, we've got solid LEDs, so we're actually ready to fly. You can uh, use the auto takeoff or you've still got all the controls that we had with the transmitter. So this is really good. And I'm just going to bring it over here because I know I've got a level surface here. And we bind it up facing that way and uh, I'll show you headless mode and everything as well. We can calibrate it as we did before. So you can actually just take out this nice little neat folded up uh, drone uh, and, and just your phone. You don't need to take the transmitter with you. So to calibrate it, we simply press this button, get the flashing LEDs, they'll be flashing at the front as well. Make sure it's on somewhere level like I explained before. And we're ready to go. So I'm going to start the, the video going. And my hands are so cold, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to operate this. Here you go. And you can pull both the sticks down and out and fly. So it's absolutely brilliant, really nice. We're in low rates and I'm probably going to have to up those rates pretty quick because the wind will get hold of it, I'm sure. That's how strong the wind is. It's literally just taken her away from us. And rates are always lower in uh, when you're actually flying with an app, I always tend to find. So that is actually doing all right. It's going to pulse up and down as well because the wind is quite strong. As you can see, I'm on full pitch and it's literally only just holding there. So we can up the rates. That's nice. And sometimes on some of the quads, I've actually found 100% has been better than the uh, with the transmitter. So let's just give that a go, shall we? There we go, now we're up in 100%. Oh yeah, it's nice, look at this. I'm liking this quad, I tell you. Hey, <laughs> look at you go. And it is really sort of gusty wind and it's still holding beautifully well. <laughs> you see it sort of pulsing up and down. Let's see how we do for range, whoa! <laughs> Way up we go. There we go. So, 
Now we're probably about 30, well, we're getting on 50 meters. If we get out to that hedge, we're definitely over 50 meters. Yeah, we are, look at that. And it's still holding really well. A little bit nervous because of the wind out in that field. We'll be, oh, we just dropped out of Wi-Fi there. Just, only just, I've still got control. So a good 50 meters. And of course, you can always uh, add a Wi-Fi extender if you want to. Uh, I've actually got one of those. I might give it a little go in a little while. Uh, just treating myself to one. So you can extend the range then if you really wanted to. And that's just a small thing that you could carry around with you. So really nice, nice flying as usual with this lovely quad. I'm really enjoying this quad. Whoa, you can see it pulsing up and down there. Way. <laughs> nice stuff. <laughs> okay. So we could do uh, flips with this as well. There we go, same as we did before. Oops, just press this button here and then up we go. Wee, oi. Try and keep it closer to me, but it's going to be a little bit of an effort, I think, I must admit. And we were bound up facing down that way, so let's just see whether headless mode works, shall we? So headless mode is that one. Yep, and headless is working fine. So back towards me, over to the left, over to the right. Oh, I don't like headless mode sorry it's really just not my bag so but it, it is working fine everything's working fine on it so uh, doing a great job as you can see it's really struggling against that wind but it is doing a pretty damn good job the, I must admit I'm a little bit disappointed just looking at the screen how the colors change so much on the white banners it's a pity we can't lock them off but it is just a very low grade uh, quad with, with a small camera on it so yeah you see it's holding beautiful now if I turn it around it'll probably pick up a different uh, different color and then if I point it back towards the house oh no it didn't do it that time typical nice thing about these LEDs I can actually see where it is even over there so I can line up the LEDs on me and just fly it straight back towards me like that very nice indeed I'll tell you what let's bring that into land Just bring the throttle off, or you can use the auto land. Hold the throttle off for a couple of seconds and then it will stop. And what I'm going to do is just point the camera down so I can just show you how good that is as well. It is done amazing. I'm really impressed with this little bit of kit. So let's try the auto takeoff. Oh, you, oh, sorry, forget on this one. You've got to prime the motors there and you press the auto takeoff. So I really don't see a lot of sense in it, but never mind. And we're still recording. So. I know a good mate of mine likes to inspect gutters and everything. He actually earns money by clearing gutters. So this is the quad for him, I think, because this thing's perfect for it. You can just see everything with it. Whoa, I'm really going to lose it. Wait. <laughs> Thought I'd lost it there, but we have not. Whoa. It's that wind is just catching it. But it's really good. It's doing a superb job. There we go. Nice, very nice indeed. Let's just do a nice smooth pass if I can. There we go, oh, the wind is just pulsing it up and down. So I can't do too smooth, I must admit. So. But it is nice, yep. Yeah. I'm pretty impressed with this as you've probably got the impression to so guess what's gonna happen on the summary, can't you? <laughs> really nice. I'm gonna stop the video and see whether I can take a still. And let's just take it right up again. Oh, I'm going to risk it now. Whoa, that wind's... Because, of course, the higher you go, the worse the wind gets. Whoa, that's really struggling. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this. Whoa, yeah, look at that. Oh, a full roll. It's still not having an effect on it. Whoa. Whoa, just missed it. <laughs> let's bring that down. <laughs> Guys, it's just gusting around from the house and the trees and everything. So I'm going to bring it into land. It has done a superb job. That is really good. And to do that all on a on a on an app is really good. So you can fly it in the gyro of your phone. So you can still go up and down with the uh, throttle. And then if I tilt the phone forward, it goes forward, backwards, and again, not point to the compass. So it can come at angles and everything. Superb. Just amazing what this thing does. That's really good. Okay, so just had a slight hissy fit there. When, if you look at this, uh, when I actually turn it to a certain angle, pitch it forward, it then 
changes the image around. So I was just getting a little bit confused with exactly what was going on there. But you're, you're, the rock and roll is still the same. So that is always forward, back, right and left. So I'll just give it another quick go for you. Uh, and then we're all done, I think. Well, there we go, so now we're, we're flying it on the gyro, and as I was going to say, was with the kids, with the grandkids, what I do is get them to turn when they, when they turn the quad, so if it, hey, see, it, that changes the controls. Yeah, that's a weird setup. I'm not happy with this on the gyro, because as soon as you actually change anything, it, oh, it just, yeah, just changes what way around the controls are so yep I would definitely first failure on this thing is definitely not to not to do that because uh, as soon as you tilt it forward the controls go around the other way sort of thing so yeah yes so now this is my throttle uh, and also the yaw and if I tilt it back this way then this is my throttle and yaw so whoa, I don't like that that shouldn't really swap around so I don't know if there's a way we can set that in setting to be honest how many people are going to fly on the gyro if that's the only error with it, and I think it more or less is, <laughs> I have no issues. Okay, so what am I thinking of it? Well, what do you think? <laughs> if you know the channel at all, you know damn well I love it. Uh, you can tell that by the way I was just reviewing it. It's a nice size, sort of fit in a jacket pocket, I would say, or obviously go into a bag, no problem at all. It uh, wouldn't go in a uh, sort of trouser pocket or anything, and it is lovely in flight. I mean, that's my whole thing with flying is the flying experience. I want a good, nice experience, and this is rewarding to fly. It's just enjoyable. When you fold it out, you can see why it's then going to go stable because of the size of it. And it actually clicks into position and really stays there, as I showed you before. The props are really good. They get out of the way if you're going to have an impact with them. And also, they are so flexible. I mean, seriously flexible. Um, so you could have a job damaging one. If you did damage one, you do actually get a couple of spare props with it as well. So you, you could just easily replace the blades if need be. And you get a little Phillips screwdriver, which you basically unscrew whatever prop you've done, uh, prop blade, and you just pop it back in you can also strip the whole quad down should you so need to um i, I haven't had any issues with it at all so i've not needed to take anything apart but it's literally phillips screwdriver all the way around and you could strip it all down the transmitter is awesome works really well good range and everything i'm not sure if i did mention it but i'll mention it now anyway to do a flip when you're using the transmitter you simply press this button here press this uh, stick here down you can hear it click in there and then you just choose a direction and it will do it in any any direction at all the same as i showed you with the app anyway so and the controls worked really well and like i say if you're new to flying keep that closed don't bother with the fpv just learn how to fly then you can use the fpv and fpv it really did it i could fly fpv concentrating on the screen so if you've got goggles that will take your phone pop them in and you could actually fly this fpv yes it's not up with the racer speed and everything else but you can actually fly and line up shots with it no problem at all as i clearly showed you uh, when we were flying there the leds at the front work really well for identifying it when it was dark under the trees i could pick out where it was and coming towards me which was good the actual battery itself like i say is an 800 milliamp hour and it's a single cell and you just charge it by simply popping the uh, charger that you get with it and that goes into your USB uh, port, so either in your car, your computer, uh, I use power banks when I'm out and about, uh, or you can plug it into a mains adapter as well. It uh, is black when it's, uh, so you've got no LED when it's actually charging. When it's fully charged, you get a red LED on it to show that it's fully charged. And it did take about an hour and a half to charge. And I got on average seven and a half minutes flight, which I thought was pretty good for everything all in on this. Um, I thought that was pretty good. The app worked really well. That was really nice and easy to use. Um, you do get music, dramatic music playing all the time. I turned that off straight away. It really would get on my nerves, so I didn't bother with that too much. And the game that comes with it, I wasn't, you know, it was 10 seconds and you sort of go, oh, wow. And then you go, oh, <laughs> that's all it does. Your instructions, uh, you get instructions for the game and how to play it and also how to actually use the app. And I've done a complete separate video on how to fly using an app. So if this is all new to you, I'll put a link down in description go and have a look and see what you think um, and that should help you through with understanding it 
You also get ordinary instructions with it, uh, and they are really quite good. They're, the translations are pretty good from Chinese to English, and that would help you if you're brand new to flying. But I'm hoping the review would do that for you anyway. But it answers any more of your other questions that you might have possibly have that I haven't covered. Any issues with it? Well, not really, apart from uh, the lens is a little bit vulnerable. Um, I mean, this is just normal with the design. You could do with just a little cap to cover it over, or, or I usually put a lens cloth across it and would just hold it with an elastic band. Uh, but I'm just giving out my personal views. I mean, a lot of people don't bother about them, just stick them in and out of bags. Uh, but I always get a bit uh, a bit worried if I get a scratch on the lens, it's done. The actual quality from it, uh, though it's a 720p, it only puts out at uh, two and a half thousand kilobits per second and that's really quite low and that's why the video looks quite blocky when you uh Pull it up to full screen. Uh, the other issue I had was it's a, it comes out at um, uh, 1920 1080p on the actual uh, still images, but that's actually no better than taking a still off it at 720 and pulling it up. I, I yeah, what they've done with it, I don't know. I would say you got better video, better stills quality off the video than you did off the stills shots. Um, uh, that's not uncommon at this level, uh, but you know it, it was brilliant at FPV, and that that's a real benefit. And you do get a record of what you're doing, and it's pretty cheap as well. And saying how cheap it is, I'm going to show you how you can get this down uh, at time of review review for about thirty, just over the thirty quid mark. So I'll go and show you that now. There's a link down in the description. If you use that, it'll bring you straight to this page uh, and then I'll show you how we can order it. You can go for one without a camera. You're going to save yourself quite a bit of money there, but you'll be losing out on the FPV, obviously. And you've got a color option on the no camera one, but I'm going to, I'm going to show you how we get all of these prices a bit cheaper at time of review anyway. Uh, the way I run the channel is any deals and promos I can see that are related to uh, the actual products I'm reviewing I'll put down in, in description for you so go and check those out and use those links because that will uh, get you whatever price I can find you really so let's go for the top of the range one so we're looking at 37 quid and uh, for the two megapixel one so just pop that in our cart you do have to be registered with them or, or log in with them so make sure you've done that as well with Gearbest and then view the cart and then all you have to do is a very old code but it still works RC18 OFF and then apply that and you get it for 32 quid so I think that's pretty good pretty good price any other RC items that you're buying uh, you, you can add them on and then leave this code this will get up to 13% off if there's already a discount on it more than 13 it won't give you anything if it's got say an 11% discount you'll get an extra 2% discount so I might be being a bit miserly there but hey if I can fly cheaper means I get more batteries or more quads and more fun hope you've enjoyed the review and I look forward to seeing you on the next one mm -hmm.